we're going to program these bugs to walk back and forth, left and right, and turn around when they hit the wall. And the bug on the top actually performs the turnaround correctly. Uh, and we'll turn around again. And what we're going to do is make the bottom bug act in the same way. So I'm going to go to the other bug. Let's see, beetle one, turn it off. Okay, so we have beetle zeros that we're working on. Now I've already shown the how to make the X uh, stop things. So it broadcasts a stop message, um, changes costumes. Now this is the code to stop the bug when I receive stop. I'm going to reset to the original position, which should be your X, original X, Y coordinates right there. And I want to stop the other scripts in the sprite, which it will refer to only this. There's only one other thing in this sprite. So it's going to move positions and then stop other scripts. So when I hit play, it should reset the bug and stop it from moving. Now we're going to go ahead and look at how to make it actually turn around once it hits the wall. And there's a couple things that I turned on here. They are, let's see, it looks like I have another Beatles, Beetle 1. Let me turn off those and the direction. All right, so Beetle 0, I'm going to go to Motion and I'm going to display the X position so that we can actually see what it is. And we're going to be changing the direction as well. That one should just be 90. I don't know why. Okay. Let's go ahead, hit play. And you're going to see it moves to the right. Okay, fantastic. However, it doesn't turn around. So we're going to work on that next. How would this beetle know it's supposed to turn around? So let's watch this happening. You see that the X position increases, but then it stops. It's, let's go reset. X position is increasing, and then at some point, Scratch doesn't let you keep running off the screen, so it will stop you. But what I want to do is turn around before I start leaving the screen. So when would that be a good time to turn around? Well, I'm moving this beetle right here. I'm thinking when the antennas hit the edge of the screen, you could go all the way till maybe the center of the body is at the edge of the screen. I'm just going to go until the antennas hit. All right, my X position is 213. So remember that number, 213. So what I want to do now, we're going to go to, let's see, control. And we're going to do an if. So it's an if block. Now what we're going to do is turn the direction around. So I'm going to go motion, point in direction. Now the original direction is 90. So this direction, you can choose negative 90 to go the other way. So it'll point to the left instead of to the right. But we have to decide when do we want to point in the opposite direction. So that's where the if statement comes in. And we're going to go down to operators here. So I know the X position when it's too big, that's when I want to turn around. So we're going to use this one, the first one, and there's a greater than sign in between. So it's a little hard to see. Uh, let's see, I can zoom in here. So when something, I'm going to fill this in, is greater than 50. Now I don't want it to be greater than 50. I'm going to do 212. That'll be one less than 213. Uh, we can play a little safe and just do maybe 205. Uh, we can play with this number later depending on how we like the way it looks. What goes in here, what we're going to put in there under motion is X position. And you can just drag X position. Notice that it's sort of, uh, I guess it looks like a capsule shape, kind of an oval. That means it fits in here. So this is X position greater than 205. When that happens, 
then I want to turn around and point in the other direction. So I'm going to drag this. Now don't click on X position, it'll remove it. You have to click on the green. I just click on this greater than sign. And I'm going to drop it. It's a little hard to see, but you need to drop it right there. It can't just be close. It has to actually get in the right uh, place. You'll see it highlighted in white there. Okay, so if X is great, greater than 205, we're going to turn around. You can hit this equal button. It kind of zooms the code view so you see everything. And where do we put this? Well, I can't put it at the, all the way at the end because you can see that there's nothing below this forever loop. But after it steps, it's going to walk five steps, wait for it. This is only a 1 20th of a second. And then it's going to check if my X position is too big, I'm going to turn around. So I'm going to hit the reset button that moves the bug back. And I'm going to start my bug a little further forward, which is 158, negative 101. And there we go. Bug turns around. Now, did I like where it turned around? Uh, oh, here's a problem right now. It's facing to the left, and I just hit the reset button. What does reset do? When I receive stop, goes to, it's in the right position, but it's not facing the right direction. So I have to add point in direction, and 90 is where I actually want it to face, not negative 90. So I can delete the negative. So now it'll point in the right way. Now when I hit play, it should bounce off the wall. When I hit reset, it should go to the original position and point in the direction 90. Now, of course, you can put whatever direction you want in here, but uh, if you don't put the right direction, when you reset it, you're going to see that it's probably not going to behave the way you want it to. So I want it to point in the 90 direction when I reset. Oh, there we go. So now it properly resets. Okay, so I want the bug to now bounce off the left side here and watch the X position. It's going to go negative something, negative 200 something. It went too far. Um, you can always hit that reset button if you want, but I, di I didn't want to turn it around, so I just hit the regular stop button. So the X position I want to do is, oh, look at that, negative 213. All right, there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, oops. A couple ways to do this. I could duplicate this block, right-click duplicate, um, and then modify it. But what I'm going to do is just rebuild that block. So I'm going to Control, and this is an if then. Now I need the operator. Well, actually, let's grab the x coordinate, x position. So now, when the X position, now negative numbers hurt your head a little bit, at least they hurt mine. I want to stop it when it hits, let's say, negative 205. We'll just keep it consistent, negative 205. So let's go ahead, do this. Negative 205, boom, X position. That goes up there. And now I want to point in the direction. Now this is regular positive 90 because it will be to the right. Um, and if you need to play around with that, you can always click in the direction. Unfortunately, it put that right on top of my beetle, but that's, that's how you can see what direction you're pointing. All right. Um, I could turn on turbo mode and I believe that just makes it go. Maybe I'm not sure what turbo mode does. I better turn that back off. All right. Ah, it's not turning around. What is the problem if X position greater than 205 point in direction negative 90? So we have a bug in our code, which is funny because there's a bug on the screen too. A bug means something that's not functioning the way you thought it should. So I took that out and everything seems fine. Okay. So what's the problem when I add this in? So x position is fine, but let's look at the 
Simple. If x position is greater than negative 205, well, the x position's always going to be greater than 205 until the bug is like way over here, and it finally will become less than negative 205. So what I did wrong, the inequality sign in here is incorrect. So we're going to go ahead and grab the other operator. Notice they're the same except the inequality sign changes. So we got negative 205. I'm just going to drop x position in there. I don't need this one anymore. Oops. What happened? Uh oh. So I, I did undo with control Z. Uh, and then I can drag this into there. All right. So I had a inequality sign reversed. And that was my problem here. So now my bug will run to the right. It's going to turn around. And now when it's less than negative 205, boom, it turns around again. Now, why does it keep going back and forth? Because all of this code is in a forever loop. So what is it going to do? It's going to do all of these forever. And I'm going to split this into three parts so you can see what's happening maybe a little more clearly. What it does, it moves, and then it waits just 1 20th of a second and then it checks right here if it hits the right wall and then if it does it changes directions and then it checks if the, you hit the left wall and then changes directions again just looking for comments but i don't see them that's okay so now we're going to build this back together. Um, and feel free to play around with this. If you only have these two, it's only going to change directions on the left side. And if you look where the bug is currently pointing, that'll actually be fine. Uh-oh. There we go. No, I didn't have it attached to the uh, starting block right there. So it'll change directions to the right, but it lacks the code to change directions on the right side back to the left. So it's just going to get stuck over there and you can hit reset. So I need to add in the second if block. So it's important. The order is important. Uh, and another thing you don't want to do is put an if inside an if, if that's not what you meant. So again, I broke this out so that we can see the three things that are happening and the order is important right here. So it moves weights and then checks the right wall and turns around if it hits, checks the left wall and turns around if it hits. So I'll build it back together, drop it into the forever loop, and then put the forever when you click. Uh, I like to put my code above and below each other like this. Uh, I find sometimes if you put it to the side, what can sometimes happen to me as if I'm zoomed in. I don't even realize that that block is over there on the right side. Uh, you can hit the equal button and that gives you usually a better zoom, but I'm going to go, uh Oh, I'm going to lay it out above and below like this. All right. So that's left and right. The lab assignment is to make a bug uh, or well, a different sprite move up and down. So I have a butterfly here, and I'm going to enable it. Uh, I'm not going to show you the code for the butterfly. I'm just going to show you what it does. Uh, first of all, I had to fix the direction. Uh, the original costume was facing up, and I didn't like that. I was going to mess all my directions up, so my original costume was facing up. Um, whereas this bug original costume was facing right. So the first thing I did to the butterfly is I rotated it so it faced the same way as the bug to the right. So that whatever direction I point this, the butterfly points in that direction. Uh, so I didn't like the way it was pointing originally, so I had to change it. Uh, okay, so here's the butterfly stop. This points in direction zero because zero is up. Um, and it has a different uh, initial pos x, y position. I don't want to start it on top of the beetle. Um, and then I stop other scripts in the sprite. I'm not going to show you that script because that's part of your lab. But I will give you some hints. It's going to look really similar to this, 
except you can probably guess that you're going to be using the Y position, not the X position. And uh, in the butterfly, you can, let's see, if you click on that button right there, this is under motion, you click on Y position, it will tell you on the screen the Y position so you can watch it change. And I noticed one thing on the Y position, it didn't go to quite to 200. I think I used like 180, 160, something like that. So you can watch the Y coordinate change right here. And when you click on another, that should stay on the screen. All right, so when you're coding that butterfly, you're gonna need the Y position, definitely. And you're gonna test that the Y position is too small. Oops, I put these upside down, but it's okay. If your Y position is too big, you're at the top and you want your direction to be Let's see, negative 180, so you can play around here, or actually that would just be 180 to go down, and zero to go up. So your direction is going to be quite a bit different than the beetle. It's just going to be zero and 180, or 180, zero, depending on how you check. And that should get you a butterfly going up and down. Now on this lab, I want to see at least three sprites moving up and down starting in different positions and three uh, other different looking sprites going left and right so i have i'm going to enable my uh oh let's hit reset so they all reset to a new position so i would need two more butterflies starting in random positions uh, to complete this lab and then you hit play and you see that they all move like this the other thing you need to do is start one of your sprites going the other way. So how would I do that? Well, we just built beetle zero here. I need it beetle zero, beetle one, beetle two. Uh, you can start it. You don't need to start it at 90. You can start it at negative 90. Now I better hit reset because that only happens when reset is hit and it's that beetle there. Now I hit play and that beetle starts in the other direction. All right, so this lab you need six sprites, three going up and down, three going left and right, and you need to start some of them going right, some going left, and some going up, some going down. They all need to reset to a, random pos or to, to a different position so they're not all on top of each other.